Hello, and welcome to this theater talk for Roundabout's production of Covenant. I'm Alan Washington, a teaching artist here at Roundabout Theater Company. And I am Kadi Mali Harris, also a teaching artist at Roundabout Theater Company. And we're so excited to welcome York Walker. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, York. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you. So, Covenant, what's the origins of this play? You know, when did you start writing it? And from what I hear, it first started from you when you were driving for Lyft and you seen a girl with a blue dress? Yes, I was driving for Lyft. Struggle, survival job. <laughs> uh, and um, it was a long ride. And I was on my way back to LA and I got this image in my head of this uh, black girl in a blue dress. Mm. And I was like, I don't know who, what this is or why this is popping into my head. Um, but I had been interested in writing a horror play and I couldn't really figure out how to do it. I had a whole other story, uh, actually when I was in grad school that just wasn't working. Um, but this is years later. And I was like, okay, what, who is this girl? And I was like, okay, if she is in a play, where does the play take place? And I was like, mm. okay, she lives in the same town that The Color Purple takes place in. Okay. And I was like, I can see that. I also was really curious about Around this time was the Jesse Smollett situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the, the Michael Jackson stuff had resurfaced uh, mm -hmm. because there was a documentary. And so I was really interested in the truth and rumors because in both of those situations, nobody knows what actually happened except the people involved. Right. Mm -hmm. But all of us as a culture were kind of all putting pieces together and trying to decide what happened. And so I was like, it would be really cool if I could do that in a play where you're not sure what the truth is. Um, and so based on people's perceptions and the rumors in the play, you could try to piece things together and then see if you're right at the end. Um, so all of those things kind of work together. And then I remembered the myth about Robert Johnson selling mm -hmm. his soul to the devil to get his music talent, which I think was in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, I think they mention it, or they, there's something about Robert Johnson in there, I think. Oh. Um, and so I was like, okay, maybe all of these things are in the same world, and mm -hmm. it just kind of spilled out from there. Well, that's, that's beautiful. That's a great, beautiful, long journey. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we also want to talk about your journey as an actor, right? Yes. And how has your acting training, you know, fueled you in your work as a playwright? Yeah, um, I'm retired. <laughs> oh, you're retired? I'm retired now. No, we can't uh, have that. You know, I just, people say that something is going to pull me back into it. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't had any formal training as a playwright, um, so it's really just vibes and hoping wow. for the best. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of it is being in so many plays that you don't realize how much you're taking in about how to tell a story. Right. Yeah. That has been helpful and, you know, we've all as actors gotten scripts and been like, <laughs> now what, what am I supposed to do with mm -hmm. this? What I don't is know, it? Mm -hmm. what is it, what is it about? <laughs> Why are we here? So when I'm writing, I try to write roles and stories that actors are excited to do. Mm. Especially the stuff I write, it's exhausting for actors, so I want it to be fun and I want it to be interesting, I want it to be challenging. Cause you know, eight times a week is no joke. Man. So at least, you know, I hope that you are excited about going to the theater <laughs> to do the eight, eight shows a week. But also I think there's something in being an actor and having to interpret somebody else's words and getting someone else's language in your mouth and making it sound natural, that you start to learn several playwrights' rhythms and things like that. And so I think I've kind of, you know, through osmosis, gotten some of those rhythms in, into my work, influenced by August Wilson for sure. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's also, there are moments when I'm writing it feels like you're in collaboration with something bigger. Like sometimes it feels like there's a version of the play that's already done. And I'm just trying to tap into what that is. And a lot of times I'll just write down what the characters are saying. And mm -hmm. then I go back and edit it later. But when it's not like that, when you're not in the zone, sometimes if there's like a, a difficult scene or emotional scene, I don't want to come at it from, oh, I think it should be like this or, or that character should say this 
because I wanted to be as honest as possible. So then I tap into my actor training of like, okay, if I was in this emotional state, mm. what is the most honest thing that a person in this emotional state would say? Mm. Just because I feel like it helps the actor when they get the script, it, it, it sort of guides them to where they need to be. You know, this play really has it all. There's religion, music, suspense, secrets, rumors. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about some of the different themes of your play and why you wanted to explore them in this thriller, horror genre, as you called it? The religious aspect, I, I grew up in a very religious home. Grandfather was the preacher of my church. Like, we never missed church. Twice on Sunday, Bible study on Wednesday. You know, it, it's, it's, uh, it was rough as a, as a kid knowing that he was gay very early. Mm -hmm. So I'm finding that that is coming out in my work a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And even in rehearsal, you know, there are things that I feel like, you know, happened a long time ago and that I'm like, I'm, I, I have a good life and I'm very settled in, in who I am as a gay black man, but you know, watching some of the scenes or, or being in conversation in terms of table work around the play and the things that people are bringing up, it's like, oh, all of this is like very fresh. Like it's very, mm. it's still, pr like that version of me is still like here. My grandfather actually said that you go to church to get like a nugget of truth that could possibly change your life. And I don't go to church anymore, but I feel like theater is that for me. And so I wanted to write something where people like me could see themselves. Um, and I think the play does it in an interesting way. Also going with the, the, the horror and the thriller of it all, specifically black horror, there is nothing that black people universally do not mess with and are afraid of than like spirits, mm -hmm. ghosts, ghosts, ghosts the, 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 the devil. We just don't, <laughs> we don't mess with it. <laughs> so all. it just seemed like it all worked really well together uh, for this particular story. And you know, this is your first produced play, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what has that journey been like from you know, having this idea in your head to writing on a page and now having a full production with light, sound, and, and the theater magic. What has that been like for you? It's crazy. It's, cr it's really exciting. I mean, I think I've, I've been writing for TV for the last two years or so, which is a completely different thing. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, and it's, and it's fun and it's interesting, but you're servicing someone else's vision for the show. And so it has been nice to sort of have my own Thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's my vision that, that, you know, I can put on stage the thing that I want to see, the thing that I'm most interested in. I am the happiest in a rehearsal room with actors working wow. on a play. Mm. Wow. And I have been realizing that, like, I am more in tune when I'm in the pocket in my own life. When I'm in a rehearsal room, I am just, I can feel like I am, this is exactly where I need to be. I am in the pocket. I'm like skipping the rehearsal every day. I like, I don't want wow. it to end. Mm -hmm. And we're in the third week now, and I think we start tech at the end of next week. And I'm like, tech, and then we open, and then it's done. Yeah. So then I'm like, I'm like, all right, so what's the next thing? How do I get the next thing going? Mm. And then how do I keep, you know, working on multiple plays so I can keep going? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, um, so it's nice to be able to have a full production, but not only have a full production, but have it with a, a theater company that's, uh, to, first of all, <laughs> most playwrights don't get productions. Mm. That's number one. To get a production off Broadway mm. is ridiculous. But off Broadway with Roundabout is, an, I don't, I don't it, this, it's, all of it is ridiculous. Mm. And so I am, I am just so happy to be here and I don't want it to end, uh, but yeah. It, yeah. it's, it is literally, I think it's the closest I've come to a dream come true in terms of like the vision for my life and the things that I wanna do. This is, I think, the first like actual thing that is like, oh, this is a realized dream. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow, yeah, and we're so happy to have you this. Thank yeah. you. I think I speak for the whole roundabout team when I say. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have with York. 
But thank you so much for taking thank the you. time to talk with us. Of course. This was awesome. This thank amazing. you, York. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us on this section of Theater Talks. For all you insight seekers out there, please take a look at our upstage guide at roundabouttheater.org.